morning, folks. Uh, yeah, so I am still working on some uh, the call transcripts between Teresa and Stephen Avery, uh, just their call records for that day period. Um, and now I'm starting to go through Blaine and Brendan Dassey's statements to police, the reports on that. And I actually have been listening to the audio of Brendan Dassey's first statement to police from November 6th. So a lot of stuff going on here, but I wanted to first of all make a morning video or, oh yay, look, it is still morning. <laughs> I'm not as behind as I thought I was. Um, so this morning over my coffee, I was going back over Kratz's OLR report and see, I, mi I knew I missed a few things in there, and this is why I go over reports over and over and over again. It's just good practice. It's good practice for people. Um, but anyways, so I went over the OLR report again, and I noticed a few, a few interesting little nuggets. One was that he apparently up until this point had been uh, chairman of the Wisconsin Victims' Rights Board. And as a result of this bullshit, he resigned. What the fuck, dude? Like, okay, so you're an attorney, you're, an a, you're a DA. You're the lead DA. You're the DA. And you're chairman of the Victims' Rights uh, Board in Wisconsin, and you pull some shit like this, and you didn't think that they were going to do anything to your dumb ass? This man's ego, oh my God, him and Kanye, I would love to see a celebrity death match between the two of them. It would be hilarious. I will bet you money that it would be nothing but those two standing there posturing and postulating about how fucking superior they are to everybody else. Um, and see, the thing is, is that in this report, he tries to tote how he timely reported himself to the OLR, blah, blah, when in reality... He, he didn't even start the reporting until the DOJ told him to, and he only resigned as DA once the governor had already initiated removal proceedings to get him out of, the, out of office as DA. And he wants to sit there and act like he's so virtuous for stepping down as DA, and it's like, yeah, you, was, you, stepped, down, you stepped down the same way Richard Nixon did. <laughs> what? When you when he got impeached, he lit out of there. When the impeachment proceedings started, I am not a crook. And you did the same thing. And you want anybody to take you seriously, Kratz? What the fuck? Um, oh, now with the OLR, when you're an attorney and you have to do these kinds of proceedings with the OLR, you end up getting assessed fees, costs for them having to investigate your dumb ass and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Essentially, you get assessed a shitload of fines. Well, so the statement of costs was filed on October, uh, I'm sorry, August 20th of 2012. The deadline for Kratz to file an objection was September 10th of 2012. Kratz did not actually file his objection until November 14th of 2012. This boy and his fucking, I'm so special that I can do whatever I want whenever I want to do it, and everybody's just going to let me slide. Um, he offered no explanation for his late filing, and then he pissed and moaned because they wouldn't grant him uh, exception for the late filing. You are a giant fucking two-year-old, Kratz, you know that? That's exactly the shit my two-year-old does when I won't give him a cookie before lunch. Jesus. He then claimed that she, he should have to pay no costs, and he said that, that uh, his reasoning behind not having to pay any costs is because the OLR insisted on a long and lengthy arbitration process, blah, 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 blah. Why should he have to pay for it? Well, duh, dumbass, because you're the one who did the stupid shit to begin with. Don't do stupid shit. They won't take everything, including your left nut. Very simple. Uh, he claimed that he was willing to conditionally surrender to some of the misconduct charges several months before the scheduled disciplinary hearings. You are willing to conditionally admit 
to some of these misconduct charges, Kratz, conditionally? You know what that means, folks? That means that he basically wanted a plea bargain. That also means that, like, oh, well, I'll admit to this if you give me this concession. You see what I'm saying here? Kratz wasn't going to, wasn't willing to, to admit to shit until they forced him to because they weren't listening to his spoiled brat bullshit. Uh, and one of my favorites was how he said, and this is an actual direct quote from his response brief to the OLR, that he has been dragged through an expensive disciplinary hearing while furiously waving the white flag of surrender. Kratz, your ass hurts. What the fuck? You did not wave the white flag at all. You were actually upset that they dared to, to even suggest that you were in the wrong in any way. And you have the fucking balls to talk this kind of shit and act like you've got any kind of right to be upset about anything. Now, folks, uh, I actually found in my second reading of this. Give me a second. Sorry. It's a very long brief. I, I, it is highly suggested reading, though, for the Stephen Avery case. And I will tell you why in just a moment. But... Yeah, I suggest that you read this thing because I just cannot believe this. Almost there. One more page. There we go. Okay, so uh, he writes in his, in his tardy objection to costs. I'm quoting here. See? I'm quoting. Uh, As this court should by now have undeniably determined there is nothing ordinary about this disciplinary case brought by the OLR against the respondent and the assessment of any costs against the respondent as a result of the OLR's insistence on a formal hearing is unjust and borders on the into intellectually insulting. You are such a pompous ass, Wilbur. Oh my God. It was the respondent himself who has done everything since well before any formal grievance was filed with the OLR to resolve this entire matter with professional humility, having immediately and consistently taken full responsibility for any possible Supreme Court rule violation. Bullshit! I call bullshit, Kratz! You didn't take responsibility for shit until people started forcing you. You refuse to take responsibility because you honestly don't think that you're responsible for anything. That is a that is symptomatic of, of narcissistic personality disorder, folks. Now, see, this is my issue. Uh, a lot of people have asked, what does this have to do with the Stephen Avery case? I'm going to tell you right now, folks. This has to do with the... Ah! I stepped on the cord. <laughs> uh, this has to do with the Stephen Avery case because this kind of bullshit is not a one-time thing. Okay, it's kind of like, let me put it in terms that you can understand. It's like a serial killer, okay? Often a serial killer is not even identified until well after several victims. He is often not caught until well after several more victims following being identified as a serial killing. And the reason is, is that at first, you know, he tests the waters, you know, he, he strangles a prostitute. Then he goes to the other side of town and strangles another prostitute. This time it's a little more clean. The scene's a little more. They're practicing, okay? They're, they're getting better. They're honing their skills. Same thing with Kratz, folks. And if he... If this shit came out three years after the Stephen Avery trial, you can best your, bet your ass that there was not just more sexual harassment and sexual, you know, centered bullshit. There was more unethical, immoral, and even illegal activity during the Avery trial. You see? You see what I'm saying here? This is symptomatic of a larger problem. This is symptomatic of a cause. And that cause is that Ken Kratz honestly believes that he, he's God. He can do whatever he wants. And if he did this then, what did he do during the Stephen Avery trial? This 
OLR report speaks to the fact that every single case that Ken Kratz has ever sat as lead DA needs to be opened and examined and reevaluated. Because this is testimony to the fact that the man is unethical. And in the medical field, it's called the Hippocratic Oath. Lawyers also have to operate by a code of conduct. And if they violate one area of the code of conduct, their entire code of conduct needs to be examined. Okay? Does that make sense to everybody? Did I explain that okay? All right. I'm going to go through Brendan Dassey's November 6th uh, questioning by police, and I will be seeing you in a future video. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you soon.